Golf Story is an RPG that revolves around, you guessed it, golf. The player assumes the role of a young man who has decided to rekindle his love of his childhood pastime, with the minute to minute gameplay seeing the player exploring vast environments that are made up of several locales, conversing with a huge cast of charming characters, collecting items and money that all have distinct roles to play, with everything being tied together by a deep and intricate levelling up system which allows players to grow their character in a way that they see fit. The experience is largely broken up into main quests, which usually require you to participate in tournaments, the second being the various side quests that comprise the adventure, which usually involve talking to NPCs, practicing techniques or fulfilling specific goals. Seeing as golf is the main aspect of the game, it runs the risk of becoming quite samey after a while, but thanks to the huge world that just keeps on giving, there is always something to do, which immensely adds to the overall enjoyment and replay value of the game. If this one passed you by, it more than deserves a spot in your collection, and is bound to keep you satisfied for hours on end. Risk of Rain 2 carries over the roguelike and shooting aspects of the first title and expands upon it in many meaningful ways. The general objective sees the player progressing through several levels and slaying enemies with a range of weaponry and abilities that help even the odds against the onslaught of obstacles that are thrown your way. Upon defeating each adversary, the player gains experience points and currency that can be used to open several chests littered throughout the environment, which bestow a range of power-ups on the player. Every 5 minutes, the intensity of which enemies appear increases, which is bound to keep you on your toes, with the ultimate goal being to activate a teleporter in which to travel to the next world and start the process all over again. It is clear that just like the original game, Risk of Rain 2 is a real labour of love. With the visual upgrade, fleshed out mechanics and improvements, this sequel is a real triumph. To the Moon conveys the tale of a dying man known as Johnny, who is given a second chance to live his life thanks to the efforts of a corporation known as Sigmund. They have the means to artificially create new memories in those near their end. Now the narrative follows Johnny's lifetime wish of travelling to the moon, and is hands down one of the finest aspects of the experience. There are some truly touching moments that are genuinely both heartwarming and tear-jerking, but this is a story-centric journey. There is not much in the way of gameplay mechanics. As the player, you take up the role of two doctors tasked with overseeing Johnny's procedure, which only amounts to slight exploration and puzzle elements that are sprinkled throughout the duration of the narrative. It could have the potential to turn some players off, but going through the incredibly well-woven tale, more than makes up for the several shortcomings in the overall gameplay. If the original PC release passed you by, the Switch version would be the perfect way to experience this unforgettable tale. Undertale is an RPG with a distinct retro and charming atmosphere. Players assume the role of a child who happens to fall into the realm of the underworld, a realm where banished monsters reside and are separated from the surface world by a magical barrier. As with most RPGs, the minute to minute gameplay revolves around growing your character and encountering enemies that plunge the player into a battle mode that is highly unique. You control a tiny heart which symbolises your soul, and you must avoid incoming attacks produced by the enemy in a setup that feels much like a shoot 'em up. One detail that is bound to stick with most players has to be the fantastic soundtrack that manages to convey beautiful, emotional and inspiring tracks that are truly unforgettable. Complementing this are the simple yet effective visuals that culminate to create a world that is both instantly recognisable and unique. If you still haven't got round to playing Undertale, the ability to take it on the go and play with Wherever you are, as well as on the big screen, is a great option and makes it incredibly easy to recommend. Shovel Knight is a simple game at heart. There's not much in the way of story, just pure platforming and combat, which manages to feel satisfying and rewarding in its own right. Taking up the role of a knight, the main goal of the experience is to essentially reach the end of each stage, whilst collecting as much treasure as possible thanks to the shovel that you possess. Not only can it be used to acquire treasure, it also serves as the main way in which to take on enemies. Complementing this is a small selection of additional items known as relics that can be utilised as well. At the end of each level, a boss awaits the player, and requires them to figure out their distinct movements and attack patterns in order to reign victorious. This aspect is a real highlight of the game, and offers up a 
distinct amount of challenge that will test players to the limit. Any money or treasure that you acquire along the way can be used to spend on items, armor and bonus skills as well that make gathering as much currency as possible a good idea in order to succeed. If you've yet to sample Shovel Knight or fancy double dipping, the Switch version is a great option. Wargroove shares much in common with the popular Nintendo franchise Advance Wars. It is a turn-based strategy game that sees the player assuming the role of a commander of sorts and bestows a huge range of units to the player, which all possess their own unique attributes and abilities. From close-range combat units to artillery that can strike at a distance, there are a ton of options at your disposal that make each situation all the more manageable. Much like Advance Wars, there is a pretty sizable campaign, as well as several other modes such as Puzzle, which asks you to accomplish certain tasks within a time frame, or arcade mode that throws five separate maps at the player at one go, and finally the best of all, the design room, which allows you to design and play your very own maps and immensely adds to the overall replay value of the game. Visually, Wargroove is stunning, each unit possesses an untold amount of charm and only adds to the overall intoxicating atmosphere that permeates throughout the entire experience. Overall, if you're a fan of the genre and especially Advance Wars, Wargroove offers up the perfect way to get your fix. Stardew Valley sees the story beginning with the player created character leaving their life behind in order to move to a farm that was left to them by their recently deceased grandfather. The experience starts off relatively simple with only the most menial of tasks being available such as attending to your farm and crops, but it soon opens up into a much more grand adventure that sees you taking part in a whole host of activities such as meeting a cast of diverse characters, attending festivals, fishing and shopping. The sheer amount of things to do is incredible and it will soon start to take over your life if you're not careful. The addictive nature of the gameplay is what truly shines. From your daily chores to crafting and finally acquiring a sought after item, you're never at a loss of what to do. It shares much in common with the likes of Harvest Moon and Animal Crossing, with the game allowing the player to express themselves in several ways, mainly through their farm and home, which can soon grow into an intricate plot of land. Now Stardew Valley is the perfect game to relax to. The laid back nature of the overall experience allows the player to take things at their own pace, which results in hours upon hours of playtime without the overall game getting boring or stale. Dead Cells mashes several genres together and is being touted as a roguevania. There is a huge emphasis upon sharpening your skills and exploring the vast environment which is all tied together with tough but fair combat that soon becomes the real star of the show. As the player you essentially inhabit a dead corpse, with the overall objective being to find your way out of a series of dungeons that make up the adventure. As you explore you come across a surprisingly diverse set of enemies in which to overcome, as well as weapons and skills that offer up a huge range of options when it comes to overcoming the various obstacles that litter the path forward. Now central to the overall experience is the concept of cells, which most enemies will drop when defeated. They can be used to acquire a whole host of power-ups and extra items that will aid along the way, but if the player were to die all of the collected cells will be lost, but permanent upgrades carry over to your next run, which really helps you deal with the more trickier moments within the game, especially the boss encounters, which will test even the most proficient of players due to the sheer difficulty they offer. Learning their movements and behavior is key to taking them down and soon becomes one of the most memorable aspects of the game. Overall, Dead Cells will test your patience as well as your skill, but most importantly, it will reward you for sticking with it. Cuphead quite possibly has to be one of the most difficult but rewarding experiences to ever grace the Nintendo Switch. It has the potential to turn many players off with its insane level of labor, but passing it up because of this would be a huge mistake. Essentially a side-scrolling platformer, it follows the character of Cuphead and his friend Mugman, who wager a bet with the devil and lose their souls. In order to get them back, they are tasked with collecting the souls of specific targets, located throughout the world which is where the game sets off. Now both characters have several moves at their disposal, from a handy projectile that can be upgraded throughout the journey, to a trusty dash that helps out in tight spots. But the true highlight of the experience has to be the several boss encounters that make up the adventure. Each possessed their own attack patterns and solutions to overcome, and figuring them out quickly becomes one of the most frustrating but rewarding aspects of the game. You're gonna die a lot, 
and I mean a lot, but it never feels unfair. It instead pushes you to get better and ultimately get to grips with the several mechanics in place that can help turn the tide. If you've never played it, Cuphead deserves a spot in your collection. Cadence of Hyrule marries the open world adventuring of the Zelda series with the music driven gameplay of Crypt of the Necrodancer. It is a highly unique experience that requires the player to execute each action within the world to the beat of the music. At first it can be quite tricky getting used to this main aspect of the gameplay, but as the catchy music ramps up and draws you in, you'll soon be hitting everything on time, and to be honest it just feels so damn satisfying. In true Zelda fashion the adventure is comprised of an overworld that houses several dungeons and well-known locations such as the Lost Woods and Hyrule Castle to name a few, with the aim being to find and defeat various monstrous musical beasts which share much in common with the Zelda dungeon bosses of old. As you would expect a huge array of items and weaponry are afforded to the player and become central to progressing throughout the adventure, especially in combat which soon becomes the real star of the show. Now Cadence of Hyrule well and truly deserves a spot on your Switch, both fans of the series and newcomers alike will find something to love. Thank you.